All right, now to Russia, the pressures on Putin and thus the United States. When Mr. Putin watched his own TV channel yesterday, he had to have seen the beginning of the newly expanded NATO. With Finland joining, the border of protection between Russia and the West more than doubled overnight. Then there's the ongoing war with Ukraine that really hasn't gone as he had planned. John Hardy is the deputy director of the Russia program at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, and he's with us now. John, thanks for being with us on Centerpoint. Thanks for having me. So how big of a deal is it that Finland and its 831-mile border with Russia is now a part of NATO? And, and what do you think Putin is thinking today? Well, uh, Finland's accession to NATO is great for the alliance. They bring a capable military. And as you said, it will really complicate Russian military planning, uh, given that the border Russia has to defend has just uh, increased uh, dramatically. Um, I, I would have to think that the Russians, at least the ones who are honest with themselves, are realizing that, uh, gee, uh, our efforts to divide NATO, to uh, impose our so-called sphere of influence uh, throughout Russia's near abroad, is really backfiring in that um, uh, Russia is engendering the very NATO unity uh, and uh, anti-Russian sentiment among its neighbors that it was trying to prevent. So Russia, obviously, in in Ukraine, the, the losses keep mounting for them, uh, not going as Putin had planned, I think. Do you think he just keeps grinding on in Ukraine? And when does this end? Yes, he really doesn't have much of a choice in Ukraine. I think he's put, pushed all his chips to the, center, to the center of the table. And this has really become not just a war of imperial conquest, but probably one for his regime and personal survival. So. Um, he doesn't have a choice. I don't see him backing down anytime soon. Um, you know, how the war end, ends is anyone's guess. Uh, I, would, I would think that he will keep grinding on as long as he can in the hopes that Western uh, resolve and uh, uh, weapon stockpiles, things of that, that nature, will eventually wane. So what do you think is going to make him stop? You know, do, do you think that um, more sanctions would, would prevent him from continuing in Ukraine? And what, what's it going to take? Well, sanctions certainly won't deter them. He's made, uh, deter Putin. He's made that much clear. I, I think sanctions, uh, especially targeting his oil revenue, um, can really deny the Russian war machine uh, the resources it needs to wage war and threaten Russia's other neighbors. But uh, the so called uh, pr uh, 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 price cap that the Biden administration and its EU allies have imposed on Russia uh, will need to get a whole lot better. Uh, it'll need secondary sanctions to force the likes of China and India to, to get on board. And we'll really need to lower that cap price so that we dramatically cut uh, the revenue that, that the Kremlin's gaining from its oil exports. Do you see the U.S. getting more deeply involved, maybe even boots on the ground? Definitely not boots on the ground. Uh, Biden's made that much clear, and, and rightly so. Um, we are trying to help Ukraine uh, prepare for its uh, upcoming counteroffensive. We've escalated military aid. Um, I, I do think there's still quite a bit that we can do to help Ukraine. Uh, for example, the provision of ATACMS missiles, uh, which would allow Ukraine to strike uh, deeper behind uh, the front lines targeting Russian command control, key logistics nodes, and things of that nature. Uh, Ukraine also is just going to need a whole lot more armored vehicles. They, they don't have enough to form the three army corps they're trying to stand up. And then there's, all, there's lots of things that aren't you know, so sexy, like... Uh, uh, breaching equipment, uh, uh, bridges, night vision, things of that nature. So, real quick, what do you think of the Putin move or Russians detaining the Wall Street Journal reporter? Why? I, I think it's obviously a shame. Um, it, it's, I know that it's the first time since uh, the Cold War that Russia has detained a U.S. journalist uh, on espionage charges. And, you know, I, I just have to think Putin sort of turned the Russian FSB, their domestic security service, um, really taking it off the leash and allowed it to run amok. Uh, I think that um, the, the previous prisoner swaps uh, for Trevor Reed and Brittany Griner um, probably told Moscow that, hey, if we want to get more of our people back from, from the United States and they have some people they want to get back, uh, all we have to do is, is snatch an American and, and you know the U.S. will make that trade. So uh, I think we set a, an unfortunate precedent I understand why they did it, and you always want to get your folks back. But um, I do worry that this is going to be a trend that continues. John, thank you for being with us on Centerpoint.
Thanks for having me. All right. We have a lot more tonight, including the news you need to know, a plan to get us out of the energy mess, and one of our favorite guests, Sean Boltz. Stay right where you are.